Hey guys, you're watching Fishing with Gary. We're up at Lake Pleasant today, 40 miles northwest of Phoenix. And I'm gonna show you a new way to use a Texas rig that catches fish. Hey guys, let me, let me show you what I'm using before we start catching fish, okay? What I'm using is a Strike King KVD uh, three-time plastic worm. Look at this, baby. That just stretches. If you have a worm like this or any kind of plastic like that, guess what that does? When it hits the bottom, it floats up like this. Straight up. I mean, these float really good. So first of all, I took a bobber stopper, and I'm only going to put it like two inches above the weight so that that weight can just go up because what I want it to do is when the worm hits the bottom, I want the weight to float up like this and the worm to stand straight up like this. Now these come in a multitude of colors, 10, 15 colors, and I got about every one. The trick is we have to find out what color do they want today. So uh, watermelon works good, green pumpkin works good, purple and brown work good. So let's go to, let's go to fishing and see if we can hook some fish. I know there's some fish along here because I caught them a few weeks ago. So let me get the trolling motor before I run into ground. Now this lake is this lake is really clear. I'm looking at 15 feet of water and I'm looking straight down at the bottom. So uh, with that we're just gonna I'm gonna make a cast but I want to get my boat out into 25 30 feet of water. So that's where I'm headed right now. I'm just looking at the bottom right here counting the rocks. I'm using a real light tungsten weight it's only 3 16 ounce and the reason I do that is, if you see the terrain that we're fishing in, you're going to see why. There's a lot, a lot of riprap over here. And we're going to be fishing at deep shoreline. So I'm going to take me out to where, uh, where I can catch the fish. It seems like I can catch them in, in uh, 25 feet, 15 to 25, 30 feet of water. So we're just going to get way out here and let you look at these beautiful clouds here. It's a very scenic lake. It's a big lake. It has a lot of uh, cactus on it and, and uh, shrubbery. The only drawback is it's probably 102 degrees right now. So it uh, gets very warm in the summer. This is August 1st, it's the dog days of summer. So this is a trick I used to use many years ago when I uh, used to uh, fish tournaments. And I just thought of, well, you know what? I'm gonna bring this back and show you how this works. So let's just get back out here. I like to put the, water, the boat in maybe 28, 29, 30 feet of water. You can always, it doesn't matter folks if it's 60 feet of water. You, as long as you can throw it to your required depth where the fish are, 20 foot, that's all you need. The, with the light sinker though, that's the drawback. I just like to let it go down, go down, go down, take some more uh, subtle way of sinking. Once it gets to the bottom, you're gonna see your line just dip down. What I'm looking for, I'm looking to see if there's any shad on the graph or fish on the graph in 30. If there's here in 30 feet and there's shad here, the fish are going to be close by. All right, I'm already, I'm already seeing a couple of them, so I'm going to throw it out and just kind of work it back slowly. Turn my trolling motor down. All right, we're ready to go to work. So I'm just going to like throw this out, not to the shore, but I'm going to throw this out to 20 feet because that's where I think the fish is. 19, 20, 21 to 30. So let's just kind of slowly go along, have the trolling loader slow. Got a little slight ripple on the water, which is good. It's always good to have a little bit of wind or a little bit of ripple. I ran over this earlier when we weren't taping and I graphed it and I could see a lot of fish around this uh, smooth rock. And then on the other side of this smooth rock here is the, is the uh, riprap. But you can see up there, uh, along the smooth rock, you're seeing a lot of uh, big boulders and stuff, you know, and those fish will hang around those. So I'm gonna start slowing down because I'm seeing fish down there right now. Here's about three or four right here. So I'm just gonna give it some line. What I like to do is just let that dead stick and let that worm start straight up. Then maybe I'll just kind of jerk it a little bit, pull along, let that go back down. There's my bite. All right. Since I'm in 30 feet of water, 31 feet of water, I'm just going to bring him up nice and easy because 
If you bring them up from 31 feet, you dip, they are going to have to needle them. But if you let them go right away, they'll go back down. You can't spend much time sitting there taking, taking pictures of them. Come on, baby. Oh, man. That's a, nice, that's a nice bass to start out with. So here's the worm again, watermelon green flake. Here's the fish, and he is full of something. Crawdads, look at that belly. All right, let's let him go and give him a fighting chance. One. Oh no, I may have to needle him, huh? Yeah, he's trying to come back up, isn't he? Come here, buddy. There he goes. Now he's moving his tail. There he goes. Back in. Make sure my bobber stopper is at least, at least one and a half to two inches. And we'll start all over. So I'm in 32 feet and I'm seeing a lot of fish. So I'm going to uh, let this go down. I'm going to stay out a little deeper. You either have to needle those fish or you have to get them to go down. Once they start going down, then they'll be okay. I always look behind me to see if any fish are up. And if they are, I'll go back in and get them and needle them. So here's my fish again. I'm looking at 30 feet right here. Just going to move along slowly on this, uh, this rocky wall here. I'm telling you, if once you find the depth where the fish are locating, like 25, 30, 35 feet or whatever, you can always come back and find those fish in other areas. Summertime, I like fishing steep stuff. Um, <clears throat> I, don't have, I don't have too much luck on the real shallow stuff, and I don't, never, I don't hardly ever cast up on the bank. I'm at least 20 feet from the bank. My boat's in 32 feet of water, and I'm looking at a lot of fish on the bottom right now. I'm just moving real slow. It's a little bit later in the day. It's like 9 o'clock, so we wanted to wait till it started getting hot. Oh, here's another group of fish. You know where I usually find two, two fish or more fish? I can get a bite. If there's just one fish, it doesn't seem like I can always get those things to bite. Oh, there's my bite. All right, it's coming up slow. Come on, buddy. Oh, there he goes. A little jumpy for us. Man, I don't like catching them in deep water like this, but like I said, if I can let them go pretty quick, then they'll, 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 they'll get gone. Nice Lake Pleasant bass. Let's let him go. Go down, buddy. There he goes. I don't know what we call this rig. It's just a Texas rig. I use a bobber stopper, super floater worm. Um, anytime you have a super floater uh, worm that really floats good, you could use this with it. And there is not a whole lot of them out there. Trust me. Um, 34 feet, I'm still seeing fish. I'm gonna keep casting up there towards uh, the shore, just in case there's one that's a little bit shallower. Let that go down. It's taking me a little bit of a while to get that down to the required depth. There's a couple little things up here that I want to show you that that are, are pretty good for fishing. These little uh, outcroppings here. You have smooth rock and then all of a sudden you got like a little point and then I could see that that's coming out. Normally I'm wearing uh, glasses, but I thought, well, since we're filming, I'll just not have it. But see how these kind of go in the bowl, then it comes back out. So those can be really, really good for fishing. That can hold up. That can actually hold a fish off of there. Let me make a few more casts. I don't. Uh, I I kind of keep moving, folks. You know. And uh, get. I got to get back out to my required depth, 29, 30 feet. 
I did cast up towards that little little uh, point that came out. Just gonna let that go down, just naturally. Sinking, sinking. When your line goes slack, uh, I don't. You don't have to use a real heavy weight. I I like a lighter weight, you know. And I'm I may not feel the bottom all the time, but I'll tell you what I feel is the bite, and that's the important part. When you feel the bite, the worms in his mouth set the hook. So let's just kind of keep working this up a little bit further. I'm, I'm back into 30, 31 feet, and I'm seeing fish again. So I'm just going to kind of drag this out. Tell you what, though, I have a 90-second rule, meaning that um, when, it hits the, when it hits the bottom of the lake, I think that 90%, 90 second, 90, 90 or a 90-second rule is once it hits the once it hits the bottom, 90% of the time, if a fish is there and sees it, he's going to bite. So you got to be ready. You know, I may be casting deep water and only using a 3 16 ounce, but you can see that I'm watching my line go down. I'm keeping an eye on it. So when it goes completely slack, I know that it's down there. Usually after it reaches the bottom, I'll let it just sit there for a minute. And then if there is a bass there and he did not take it, all I do is just kind of twitch it a little bit. And if he sees it twitch, He'll go for it. Evidently, that cast, those last few casts just didn't get it. But there's some really good stuff coming up here. Well, here's some. I'm just going to drag this over this. Here's one, two, three, four. Here's five fish on the graph right here. Now, that's what you want to see. You want to see a bunch of fish. Because what happens if one goes after it, they all want to go after it. They can't stand it that one's going to get it. That's why you see. When you roll it up, sometimes you'll see two or three fish following you up. There's my bite. Oh boy, this one's got a little bit of a weight too. I'm using a seven foot medium Johnny Morris platinum rod with a fast tip. I love this rod, I'm telling you. It's a, it's a real good rod if you're gonna bait cast. And uh, there's my fish already, here he comes. Oh boy, another fat one. Man. Right on the top of the right on the top of the mouth, folks. It just not as big as the last two, but you know what? Good enough. So let's let this little guy go. That's a pound and a half. So that's that's not too bad. Go on down, buddy. There he goes. Alright, it's getting a little warm out here, folks. Um, at least you get the idea of this Texas rig with these floating worms, um, three times plastic worms. They're KD, KVD, they're striking worms. The trick is make sure you have that bobber stopper uh, no more than two inches so that that weight can you know, go up like this and the worm stands up. That's why I'm moving the worm real slow too. I'm not moving it fast. It's getting warm out, so tell you what, I've showed enough on this video and I uh, want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, like uh, always, if you want to learn uh, more about fishing or you're just getting started and you want to go out with me, my phone number is right on the bottom of this uh, video. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.